not everybody can see, maybe somebody's blind. So let me just make a few uh, introductory remarks. Uh, I think the program is self-explanatory, and the letter of invitation more or less framed the question that we're going to be addressing here. Uh, let me make a few truisms uh, just to kind of remind you of what got you here, at least I hope. I hope it keeps you here. The first is another is a homily. Skills are important. We all know that, and multiple versions. We think that multiple skills are important, so that's the first one. And the second point that I would make, and I would, we'll come back to this repeatedly, I hope, is that basically, in some sense, we're going to all somehow, however we do it, measure skill by performance on some task. And tasks vary, and they can be things like tests and so forth. I'm going to take a quote from a person who unfortunately couldn't be here. This is Brent Roberts, who had to send his regrets, as did uh, Larry Bloom, actually. Uh, each of them had some, some last-minute issue. But uh, Brent had this nice definition of personality, but I think it would char characterize uh, intelligence and virtually everything else. Basically, the notion is an enduring pattern of thoughts, feelings, behaviors, and tendencies to respond in certain ways under certain circumstances. And that's, that's kind of a notion that kind of guides everybody. And in the invitation letter, which you all got, I put this diagram, which we'll return to, I hope, in various forms throughout uh, the day, because I think it's, uh, I don't have a pointer here, I guess, or uh, too bad. Uh, oh yeah, I do have a pointer. So here we basically are trying to infer something about skills, but we have tasks. And the problem, of course, is that whatever the task is, and we want to argue there are lots of different tasks that can be used to elicit skills, and we want to approach how various disciplines, how various groups here today are approaching these, this, this very basic identification question, really. Uh, you know, we're on to know, well, okay, we get some performance measure. It could be a performance on a test, it could be a personality assessment, it could be whether or not people show up to school on time, and so forth. So there are things like uh, uh, performance measures, but they're guided, of course, by various incentives that people have to make effort, and the context, which could restrict performance and motivate effort, and, 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 and the skill here. So the question is really this question of going, so we all kind of believe in this kind of uh, graph, a very simple, intuitive graph. The question is, can we go from these performance on tasks back to some measures of skills, and how do we do it? And the way I think everybody, everybody in this room is approaching this problem in a somewhat different way. And I think it's interesting for us to, to talk about how we're approaching these problems, where the challenges are in the life. So basically, as I said, as we said in the letter, um, uh, that it, and I, this letter is, by the way, with Tim. So I don't want to minimize Tim's role. We've been talking about this for years, actually with Angela Duckworth, who will join us, but a few, a few, a few hours later, I guess. She's coming in from Minneapolis. But we want to evaluate uh, what I would consider, and this is a crude, uh, crude uh, typology, uh, three different approaches to assessment. Uh, they're asking the same questions. How do you get at basic skills? And, and the first is using self-reports, observer reports, and tests. I, would, I, I had lumped that in my mind with kind of traditional psychological measures. And economists have been using this increasingly. I mean, a lot of big five measures have been used, and, and Oliver John has had a very big impact on kind of getting economists into this area using, in particular, his big five measures and so forth. But there's also some other work that's being done by economists and also by people at ETS, and we're going to hear about that. And that is using games and laboratory settings with both kind of controlled experiments and various kinds of game settings to elicit skills. And this is looking at performance on particular games. Bob Levy gave a talk, uh, early, I guess it was early June, where you're looking at Sin City as a way to essentially elicit some measure of tasks. And we're going to hear more about those notions. And then, maybe more controversial, and somewhat, uh, and it is controversial, I think, in the literature, is using, quote, real world behaviors to elicit skills. In other words, using some behaviors to go back. I mean, uh, I, I'm going to make a claim, which, which speaks for myself, which is I think that. Every one of these things we're using for a final measurement is some kind of behavior. And we want to try to understand how we can go about it. So then we just laid out five questions, which I hope we'll come back to at the end of the conference. So we have a round table, but in such a way that it's not a formal affair. We're going to go and iterate on these themes throughout the conference and see to what extent we're, we're uh, going to be able to answer these questions. A few years ago, I ran a Spencer conference. Uh, that Mike McPherson kindly sponsored. This is a series of conferences, actually, on non-cognitive skills. And each, at each conference, I used to make a big slide of questions and put a big placard out in the center of the table and go back to 
go back at the end of the conference and say, how many of these have you answered? It was kind of uh, depressing, so I didn't make the uh, slide today. Uh, I have some of the old slides, decided not to use them because the questions are still relevant. But so these are some of the questions that we go back to. How, how predictive are elicited measurements of skills? So we measure the skill, but we don't want to measure them in a vacuum. We really want them to be predictive of something, okay? So that's, that's one question we're going to talk about. A second issue, and there are other issues to add to this table here, uh, how important are incentives and context in the measurement of skills? And uh, then the question is, how, how much do uh, differences in environment change the predictive accuracy of skills? And then crucially, when we think about tasks, it's very hard to think of any task we do that's actually only affected by one skill. So there's this notion of a multiplicity. We all face it in various ways. And I just kind of like to put it on the table. We're among friends, more or less. We've made hard enemies, but I think we're among friends. <laughs> we're among friends now. And I might, we might as well say that these are very hard problems. So when we think about even an IQ test, we know from some of the early work uh, many years ago, 40 years ago now, that people who do well or not do well partly depend on incentives to perform on the test. And we know the high stakes, the low stake, the low motivation, the high, high motivation test distinction has been in the literature for a while. And then the key question also is comparability. There are lots of different systems that are out there. You know, the big five that Oliver John has, uh, I guess, invented or has developed, okay, has been described as the longitude and latitude of personality. And um, so the question, though, how does this compare to some of the other measurements, like what Armin's talking about, Aldo's talking about, uh, Andy Kaplan and others? So these are questions of comparability. So let me just uh, uh, point out that this conference arose from actually, really, I think this conference actually arose from a, a visit of Robert S. Levy to the University of Chicago three months ago. And he gave a very interesting paper, and we'll hear more about this work. And then it led to a conference that we had at the Educational Testing Service, Tim and I went to, and they kindly put on a one-day presentation. I think you had 14 presentations in about nine or 10 hours, no lunch break. Uh, it, was really, it was really quite good, but I, out of it, I came very energized by the fact that we had multiple, no, that there really were uh, different ways. And I had thought of educational testing services basically just administering, SA, administering SATs and deciding how the binding of the next questionnaire should be uh, settled. And what I found was a very vigorous group. And so I, and I think it's, it's kind of exciting because I see overlaps. So then we pulled together this conference. But it's certainly true. And I should say also that another precursor to this conference was a conference that we had at the Spencer Foundation that uh, was around what Koji's going to talk about next, which is the OECD study, which is a massive study, a study of trying to look at inventories of cognitive uh, and, and, and non-cognitive skills across multiple countries. And the Spencer Foundation Conference, with John Easton was present, that organized it, Mike McPherson, and Koji came, and many, some others who are here in the room today, was a place where we really got to kind of butt heads, and people really did disagree. I wouldn't say violently, but they disagreed. And this also led to this conference. So I think we should thank the following funders. Spencer, because they, they provided some support for this uh, affair and they supported previous work. John Phillips, who's here, uh, the National Institute of Aging, and this is part of a network of a group working on the measurement and, uh, and development of skills. And uh, last but not least is the Human Capital and Economic Opportunity Network that Allison referred to, which is sponsoring, uh, also a sponsor of this conference. So bringing various networks together. So are there any questions of administration? Or should we proceed? Any, any disagreements? Well, the disagreements will come, but later. <laughs> um, so I guess, do you want to introduce Koji? Sure. OK, Koji, come be introduced. Thank you.